Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be introducing you to the idea of narrative, okay? Um, what I'm going to go through is the actual concept of narrative in visual media, but it's obviously going to be a bit of a specific focus on film, okay? Because this is quite relevant to your work for Unit 1 and your work for Unit 2. So I'm going to go over the key, some of the key terms related to narrative, and then we're also going to look at three key narrative theories as well. So we're going to look at theories from Zvetan Todorov, Claude Levi-Strauss, and Vladimir Prop. So why we're we doing this? Well, you need to be able to understand how narrative can be used to create effect. You also need to be able to understand the three narrative theories that I'm going to go through today to be able to apply them to different examples. And you will also need to understand narrative theories and narrative ideas and apply them to your own original narrative ideas as well, which is what you're going to do for your Unit 13 coursework. So you're going to be applying these theories to your own ideas. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is what does a narrative actually mean? Now, there's a lot of people who get this wrong and they think that when we're talking about narrative, they think we're talking about the actual story of the film. You know, what happens, what happens at the start, what happens at the beginning, what happens at the end, blah, blah, blah. And that's not the case, okay? That's what we call the plot, okay? The plot is what happens. When we're talking about the narrative, we're talking about the actual techniques that are used to tell the story, okay? We're not talking about what happens at the beginning, what happens in the middle, what happens at the end. We're talking about how does the plot go from the beginning to the middle to the end, okay? What are the techniques that the film might use in order to tell the story, okay? To advance the plot. So there is a massive difference, okay? The narrative is, the sorry, the plot is what happens. The narrative is how do we get there, if that makes sense, okay? So there is a bit of a difference, okay? Narrative does not mean story. It's how the story is told because, you know, you give, you give make one person tell a story, you know, a different person might tell it a different way, okay? So that's what we're referring to with regards to narrative. So a couple of key narrative terms that we need to go over first because these are the actual media language that we need to be using so you need to get into the habit of using them. So there are quite a few that I could go through but I'm just going to go with three of the main ones here. So the first one, the protagonist. Okay. Now the protagonist is the main character of the narrative. Okay. Might not necessarily be a hero, Okay, but the person that we are focusing on. Okay, so if you look at something like, I don't know, the original Star Wars trilogy, you would say Luke is the protagonist, whilst Han Solo is also a hero. Okay, he's more heroic, right? So the protagonist is the main term we use. They are probably most likely going to be a hero as well. However, it's not necessarily always the case. Uh, the antagonist is the person who opposes the protagonist. Okay, they don't necessarily have to be an evil character, but they're someone basically who tries to battle against whatever the protagonist is trying to do. They're trying to stop them. Okay, they might not see themselves as an evil character, but they just might think that they're right and the protagonist is wrong. Okay, so key terms there protagonist and antagonist. We'll try and avoid using terms like hero and villain because we're more interested in protagonists and antagonists. Okay, and the last one I wanted to look at was something called an anti hero, which is why you've got Deadpool on the screen here. So, an anti hero is someone who is they are our protagonist, they're the main character, but they might have some bits about them that are a little bit questionable. Okay, they might not be someone who is necessarily a good guy. Okay, you might have seen films where the protagonist or the main character could be a thief or someone like that. Okay, but we still like them because they're the protagonist. So that's what we call an anti hero. They don't have conventional main character attributes. They might do things that are a little bit <clears throat> immoral or wrong or something that is, you know, a little bit questionable, if that makes sense. Okay, so protagonist, antagonist, and anti hero. Right, we now need to move on to looking at the three main narrative theories. So the first theory we're going to look at is by a guy called Zvetan Todorov, which I've no idea if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but never mind. 
And what Todorov argued was that any form of storytelling or narrative follows a very similar structure, okay? And that structure is arguably set into five different stages where you've got equilibrium, disruption, recognition, repair, and reinstatement slash resolution slash new equilibrium, okay? Now, if you think about this theory, you can apply a lot of examples to this theory, okay? It does fit surprisingly well. So, let's look at the first stage. The first stage is called equilibrium. Now, what equilibrium means is it's a state of normality, okay? Everything is as it should be, but as it should be with regards to the world of the film, okay? It might be that everything is not as it should be in terms of real life, you know, but in the world of the film, everything is as normal. So if you look at something like Star Wars, the equilibrium of that would be, we're in space, there's aliens knocking about, you know, spaceships, all that sort of stuff, okay? It's not our equilibrium, because we know that stuff doesn't exist, okay? But it's the equilibrium in the world of the film. We'll also meet our protagonists during the equilibrium, okay? Um, what comes next is the disruption. So something comes along and disrupts the equilibrium, okay? It could be a quest that the protagonist has got to go on. It could be they're attacked by the antagonist, okay? Uh, and then the main arc of the film gets going. The recognition is a stage where the disruption is recognised by the main character and they realise that they now need to do something to get things back to the way they used to be. So they think, right, I need to go on this quest and do this thing. Okay, If I do this thing, everything will go back to the way it used to be. <clears throat> and then follows is the repair. Okay, And this is where the actual attempt to restore the equilibrium happens. So the main characters, the protagonists, will do something, whatever they need to do, to stop the force that is causing the disruption. So they might go and try and solve the riddle, or defeat the antagonist, or rescue whoever. Okay, They will try and repair the damage. And then finally, you have the new equilibrium, the resolution, the reinstatement. And this is where the protagonist they stop the disruption. It all goes back to the way it used to be in the equilibrium. Or sometimes things might change for the better and you would get a state of new equilibrium. Okay, You could apply a lot of things like superhero films to this stage. So the equilibrium could be something like I don't know, Spider-Man. We meet Peter Parker and he gets bitten by a spider. Okay, a, oh, probably That could be the disruption. He's bitten by a spider. The recognition is that he needs to use his powers to defeat evil people. The repair, the repair is where he tries to beat the bad guys. And then the reinstatement or new equilibrium could be, you know, he's learned to accept his powers and he's going to use them responsibly, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But if you really think about it, you can apply so many different films to this particular theory. It doesn't necessarily even need to be action films, even though it seems like action films will fit it really well. It could be something like a, a romance film. You know, the equilibrium could be a guy who wants to be alone. He's not looking at, you know, getting a relationship. However, the disruption could be he meets someone who he falls in love with and it changes his whole life outlook. Okay. And the, the recognition and the repair could be him, the guy and the girl trying to get together. You know, it doesn't necessarily need to be something that is action orientated, although you get the, the words that they use do suggest that sort of action feel to it, but it could be any particular film genre, really. Okay, next we're moving on to binary opposites, or binary oppositions. Now, binary oppositions is the idea that each narrative you tell has two or more opposing forces that battle against each other. And again, it doesn't necessarily need to be something like action-related. Okay, good versus evil, that sort of stuff. It could be anything that is you know, something that opposes each other. So again, if you're looking at something like a romance, so maybe look at things like the idea of boy versus girl, you know, commitment versus staying single, something like that, okay? Um, you know, it could be, I don't know, something like East versus West, you know, man versus nature. It could be a theme. It could be not necessarily, you know, two people battling against each other, but the idea of any two things that oppose each other. Okay, and they, you know, battle against each other for dominance in the narrative. Okay, who's going to win? You know, is he going? To, is the guy going to commit or not? 
And then finally, we've got Vladimir Prop's idea of stock characters. Now, Vladimir Prop, he began his sort of what he analysed children's fairy tales in the 1920s, like maybe even a little bit earlier than I'm not sure. Anyway, and he argued that each narrative contained a series of stock characters whose role in the narrative was always the same every time. And some of these, again, you will still you will still um, recognise these these stock characters now. So he argued that you had seven character types of the hero, the villain, the princess, the dispatcher, the helper, the false hero, and the donor slash enabler. Now the hero, pretty obvious one, the hero is essentially our protagonist, okay? They're the main character, they fight against the villain, and they try and rescue the princess, okay? Now again, obviously what you've got to think about is you've got to think about the time that this theory was made. It was a time where he was analysing fairy tales, so they were more likely to have that very sort of traditional narrative of, you know, the good guy fighting the bad guy, rescuing the princess, okay? Um, you've got the villain. The villain obviously fights against the hero, okay? So you've got a bit of binary opposition there between the hero and the villain. Uh, the princess is something that is sought after by the hero. They often need to be rescued. Now, again, obviously, when this was written, it was written in a time where you were looking at traditional fairy tales. But there's no reason why the princess couldn't doesn't doesn't have to be a person. You know, the princess could be something that the hero wants to do. It could be something like so anything that needs to be, you know, resolved or rescued. <clears throat> okay, it could be a lifestyle. It could be. You know, saving the world, something like that. It doesn't necessarily need to be a person. The dispatcher is someone who gives the hero their quest. Okay, they provide the hero with the you know breakdown of what they need to do. Okay, you need to do this to do this or whatever. <clears throat> the helper is someone who accompanies the hero on their quest. So they're essentially a sidekick character. Okay, someone who provides the helper with support. Uh, the false hero is probably one that's a bit less common, and that's um, a character who is perceived to be a good character, but then turns out to be evil. And then finally, you've got the donor slash enabler, which is someone who provides the hero with objects or skills or magic to help them with their quest. So a good example of that would be um, Q from the James Bond films, who's the character who gives Bond all the gadgets that allows him to fight the villain and save the princess, okay? Well, you don't get princesses in Bond films, but save the girl, essentially, okay? Um, obviously, what you've got to think about, though, is a lot of these stock characters, they're a product of their time, but it's how we interpret them. So how do we... We could interpret the princess to be something else. We could interpret the villain to be something else, okay? But the overall premise of the role of the character is still there, okay? So what you need to think about is... Think about how these different theories... How many, how many films can you apply them to? Because you'd be surprised about how many films these narrative theories, you know, fit to, okay? Loads, absolutely loads, okay? So have a think about, you know, how could you apply Todorov's theory to, you know, the last film you just watched? Same with binary oppositions. What are the binary oppositions that are there? What are the two different forces that battle against each other? It doesn't need to be characters. It could be themes, okay? And then think about the stock characters. You know, are there any stock characters in there? Okay, which ones are the most obvious ones? Okay. So, for narrative, you need to be thinking about how can you apply the theories to your narrative for your own horror film? Okay, because you need to be thinking about that stuff. You know, how is it going to follow Todorov's narrative theory? Okay, what's the equilibrium going to be? What's the disruption going to be? What's the recognition, the repair, the reinstatement? What's all that going to be? Okay, how do you get that resolution at the end? What binary oppositions are in there? Okay, is it going to be as simple as something like a good guy versus an evil guy? Okay, is it going to have a bit more weight to it than that? And are you going to include any stock characters? And what's their role? Okay, how are they going to, you know meet that role they're meant to be playing, okay? What's their role in the narrative that allows them to be this particular character, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, obviously, again, if there's anything you don't understand in that video, send me an email, but that's pretty much it.